South Korea responds to North Korea's warning over the recent United States nuclear submarine arrival in the southeastern port city of Busan. Ethel Park tells more. For the first time in more than four decades, a United States submarine capable of launching nuclear ballistic missiles has docked in South Korea earlier this week, angering Pyongyang. The USS Kentucky, 18,750-ton Ohio-class nuclear ballistic missile submarine or SSBN arrived in Busan, South Korea. Tuesday, on the same day of the inaugural meeting of the South Korea-U.S. Nuclear Consultative Group or NCG. According to North Korea state-run media, Korea Central News Agency or KCNA, Pyongyang's Defense Minister Kang Son nam issued a warning through a statement on Thursday. He said, and I quote, I remind the U.S. military of the fact that the ever-increasing visibility of the deployment of the strategic nuclear submarine and other strategic assets may fall under the conditions of the use of nuclear weapons specified in DPRK law on the nuclear force policy. To the U.S. and the ROK, any use of their military muscle against the DPRK will be their most miserable choice, by which they will have no room to think of their existence again. In response to this, South Korea's defense ministry also said in a statement, in the event of any North Korean nuclear attack against the South Korea-U.S. alliance, it will face an immediate overwhelming and decisive response from the alliance, and we strongly warn again that through this, the attack will result in the end of the North Korean regime. North Korea will never gain any concessions from the South Korea-U.S. alliance through its nuclear development and threats. We urge it to recognize that its isolation and destitution will only deepen and to come out swiftly on the path of denuclearization. According to the United States, the U.S. Navy Ohio-class ballistic missile submarine USS Kentucky or SSBN 737 port visit in Busan is their commitment to the Republic of Korea for their extended deterrence guarantee that they are available and ready to operate around the globe at any time. It can be recalled that Pyongyang launched two short-range ballistic missiles on Wednesday, and currently tensions in the region remain high. So is Subogo at the Park Imrida, SMNI News, South Korea. Fears of long-term medicine shortages in U.S. hospitals arise following the tornado strike on the Pfizer plant. Jean Domingo has details. A destructive EF3 tornado with winds packing 150 miles per hour struck a major Pfizer plant in Rocky Mount, North Carolina on Wednesday, July 19th. Pfizer also confirmed the incident in a Twitter post and said that it is currently assessing the situation to determine the impact on their production. Reports reveal that the pharmaceutical plant suffered extensive damage, resulting in the destruction of approximately 50,000 medicine pallets. This has raised concerns about potential long-term medicine shortages, as the plant supplies 25% of U.S. hospitals' sterile injectables. Despite the severity of the tornado, all Pfizer plant employees were safely evacuated, and thankfully there were no fatalities or serious injuries among them. In addition to the damage at the Pfizer plant, the tornado also caused injuries to 16 people and damaged 89 buildings in the surrounding vicinity. While residents are relieved that there were no fatalities, the region has been further affected by road closures along 195 due to fallen trees. Dozens of homes and buildings were also damaged or completely destroyed. 16 people were injured by the tornado. The community and medical professionals are anxiously awaiting stable medicine supplies, understanding the challenges Pfizer faces during the recovery process. Rebuilding efforts are already underway, but the threat of shortages remains a significant concern. Reporting for News and World, this has been Jean Domingo, SMN U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken announced a scheduled visit to several Pacific nations at a time when the Biden administration shifts its Indo-Pacific strategy into overdrive. Shina Selim has the news. Washington's senior official will visit Tonga, New Zealand, and Australia next week as part of efforts by the United States to counter China's influence in the region. 
U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken will visit the region from July 28 to 29. The diplomatic tour will be full of meetings with officials from the three Pacific nations, including the inauguration of new embassy in Tonga. The State Department told lawmakers it envisions hiring dozens of staffers in the next five years and spend at least $10 million for startup, design and construction costs of new and existing embassies in the region. U.S. President Joe Biden hosted a first-ever summit in Washington with Pacific Island leaders in September of last year. The U.S. also reached an agreement this year with Britain and Australia to supply Canberra with nuclear-powered submarines through the AUKUS deal. The trip will be Blinken's third visit to Asia in a span of two months. Reporting from New South Wales, this is Shina Salim, SMNI News, Australia.